fun when I um, record from three different sources at the same time. I'm going to be uh, recording on the camera and uh, sound separately on this thing and uh, recording the screen as well. So um, God knows how this is going to work out. We'll see. So the last video I did was mostly uh, me venting my frustration about the uh, problems I've been having with Duet firmware. So in summary, all those problems that I had with the firmware have now been resolved. It's, I can now do everything that I used to be able to do with Duet 2, plus a bit more. Um, so I've got nothing. I've got nothing to whinge about now, other than the fact that it took coming up to two years to uh, to get to this point. Anyway, I'll go into a bit more depth of what happened later in the video. I'll segment the videos with a timestamp so you can skip to that bit if you're interested but but the other thing I want to talk about is um, have you ever had a situation where you want to print something that's quite big and you haven't got a clue how much filament is on the spool is there enough to do it most slicers will um, give you a pretty good estimate of how much filament is going to take but when you partly weigh down a, a reel um, how do you know how much is on there? Unless you're very disciplined and you know the distance to start with and then every time you print something you make a note of how much filament is used. Um, I don't do that. So another way, you could weigh the filament and you could work out the length from that if you know the density and a lot of other things. But I want to demonstrate another thing um, that's easy to do and you can do it with basically that and five measurements. I've done it all on spreadsheets, so I've done all the hard work, so you don't have to. So without further ado, I'll try and um, start doing a screen capture here. Shove that over there. And um, and start recording. So I should be recording the screen now. I should be able to use this. Um, so this is the spreadsheet that I've come up with um, to do the calculations. So the, um, the top numbers are the numbers that you have to put in and the rest it will do the calculations for you. Um, I've also done a little drawing there of the filament reel with some filament on it so that you can um, see what these values refer to. So first one is the OD of the filament reel which is this here. Um, what I'm talking about is <coughs> trying to do that in the mirror. Um, the overall width of the, of the, from the edge of one flange to the edge of another. That's the real OD. Then the real ID is the internal diameter of the reel. So what I'm talking about is this, this diameter here, this inner diameter. <laughs> uh, um, and obviously if you've got an empty reel, um, that's fairly easy to measure. What I do is, is put something like this on a flat table and then put, I, I used a couple of squares and I put one each side, butting up against that bit. I mean you could use any any object that's got a right angle corner, or a hardback book or a block of wood or anything and then just measure the distance between the two. Um, or you can just eyeball it or whatever. Um, if you haven't got an empty spill, <clears throat> another thing you could do is, if you're going to look at it, you could take this dimension here, which will give you the kind of the inside diameter there, and then there's a reasonably chance that the manufacturers use the same wall thickness throughout. So if you added twice this thickness onto that, it would give you that pretty much. That's the theory. Um, <clears throat> and then the other thing we want is the real width. 
which is this here, which is that basically. On the inside, the inside edges of the two flanges, and I'll measure that. And then that's that. So one, once you know those, if you if you've got the same, um, oh by the way, I'll be putting this spreadsheet. I'll put it on my Google Drive for now, and I'll put a link to it. Um, so I'll, I'll, anyone with the link can download it. We'll see how else I can make that available as well. Once you've got those dimensions, if all your filament reels are the same, then they'll never change. If you use a number of different filaments, you could save this spreadsheet multiple times to save you having to take those measurements again. So once we know the dimensions of the reel, then all we need, pretty much, is the distance from the edge of the flange to the f the first um, full reel. So when you get a new reel and it's tightly packed, it'll be kind of like this with just the top layer being a bit proud of all the other layers. Um, so what the, what we what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the uh, the length of all these tightly packed layers um, and then add in the length of the last layer that doesn't go the full width of the reel. That's theory. <laughs> so this um, distance, flange to full full layer filament distance, is, is this distance here. It's from where you've got full layer to the edge of the flange. Now, in reality, once you've used the reel for a while, they get a bit loose um, and it all gets a bit jumbled up. Um, so there isn't a clear, on this one, for example, there isn't a clear delimit between um, the full, the layers that go full width and, and the ones that are on top. So um, all you can do is kind of make a guesstimate, but really with, with it's this distance here that we want. If you've got a nice neatly packed reel then say like it is there at the top it's not too bad and you want to take that distance and then the loosely packed stuff you want to measure the width of that just if you want it 100% accurate, I mean the idea is we need a rough idea. We need to basically know is there enough filament on this reel to print this object. So if we can get somewhere close, um, it's about all we can do. And then the other value in here is the interlayer mesh factor I have called it. Which I'll come back to in a minute. So basically you need the, the dimensions of the reel of filament itself and you need to know the distance from the flange to the top of the filament. That's all you need, the spreadsheet will do the rest. So it calculates a few things, so um, first off it calculates the number of turns um, and that's fairly easy to do, it's basically the width of the reel divided by the diameter of the filament. Oh, no, wait a minute, I can come back to that. Let me recap a bit. Yeah, you've also got the diameter of the filament, I forgot to say, you need to put that in. It's either going to be 1.75 or 3, but it should work for any filament. So then it will, yeah, so it will calculate the number of turns, which is basically the, the real width divided by the filament diameter. And then the height of the filament from the real ID to the top of the first layer, because basically we've measured this distance from the edge of the flange to the top of the filament. What we really want is this distance from the inner diameter of the reel up to the top of the filament. So it will calculate that for us uh, from the dimensions that we've put in up here. And then from that, knowing what this distance is, it will calculate the number of full layers but that gets a little bit complicated um, just because 
before we um, pull this up. The first layer of filament, this, this represents filament wrapped around a reel, looking end on at the filament. So that's the edge of the filament spool down there. And this line along the bottom would be the inner diameter of the reel, the smaller diameter. So the filament, the first layer, sits on top of the inner diameter of the reel. The second layer doesn't sit on the top of those. It sits slightly down. If it's tightly wound, it will sit slightly lower. So if we minimize that, come back to there. So when this calculates the number of layers, um, this number here, this interlayer mesh factor, is related to this distance here, which is basically from from the bottom of the valley there, where we're actually going to sit, compared to if it sat on the top of the filament there. Um, and I've calculated it. And it's about 0.87 um, is that dif dis difference in height. Um, and it seems that it works the same whether it's 3mm or 1.75mm. Um, so if the reel's tightly wound and, and the filament does sit like that with one layer in between the rows and the next, then this number here is going to be around about 0.87. Um, in reality, it might not be completely touching, so 0.9 might be a better value. If you've got a reel that's been fairly well used and it's become quite loose, um, then you would want that to be 1, um, which would be about the same as the filament, each layer sitting on top of the next. So that's how it calculates the number of full layers. So basically, the, so the next bit then, we're going to calculate the length of this large chunk here. So the number, which is basically the number of full layers times the uh, number of turns. And then we can calculate the length of each one. So we need to, first off, we need to find a circumference, really, of each um, layer of filament. Um, so we start off with the diameter, and the diameter for the first layer is going to be this inner ID plus um, half the width of the filament each side. So basically plus the width of the filament. So in this case we've got inner diameter of 105mm um, and the filament is 1.75 so it means that the diameter to the centre of the filament is going to be 106.75 mil. So multiply that by pi uh, to give us the circumference, multiply that by the number of turns, gives us the length of filament on the first layer. And the second layer, the circumference is going to increase. It's going to increase by twice the filament diameter because we've got filament each side times this mesh factor if it doesn't sit on the top of the curve of the previous filament it's going to sit in the valley in between two so in that case we've got if i add that at one then it's then it would be um 3.5 times bigger than the than the first layer, 3.5 millimetres bigger than the first layer, which is 110.25. But because it can sit in the valley between the two, and let's say that's 0 0.9, nope, oh, 0.9, um, then it's going to be a bit less, 110.64. So that's the diameter to the centre of the filament for the second row. So again, multiply that by pi to give us the circumference, times the number of turns gives us the length for the second layer of filament on the reel. And the difference is that. 
That's the difference between the first layer and the second layer, the difference in length. And then we could go on and do um, the same for layer 2, layer 3, layer 4, all the way up to however many layers we've got, which is that. And then add all those lengths together would give us a total. Uh, but what I found when I, I did that, so I did it to start with, um, and I just did 10 layers just to play around. And I found this difference is always the same from one layer to the next. It's always the same. So what it means is if, if we did layer three, let's, um, let's do that. I'm just cool them down. We're at layer three, circumference, the diameter becomes that, circumference becomes that, number of terms becomes that, length becomes that, and the difference from layer three to layer two is exactly the same. But that different but if we but the difference from layer three to layer one is twice because it's this difference plus that plus the same difference again. And then if we did layer four, it would be this difference to give the total length, it would be one times the distance, um, two times the distance, it'd be three times this difference here would from compared to from layer one to layer four would be layer one plus three times this dif difference and so on and so forth. So we know that difference is always the same. Then to calculate the total length, we can just use the length of the first layer times 16. And then we can add up all the differences. And you've got one times the difference, two times the difference, three times the difference, four times the difference. So we've got, for 16 layers, we've got 15 differences. And the formula to add up numbers from 1 to n, so 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, uh, is n times n plus 1 divided by 2. Um, so in, in this case, um, n is actually 15 because the first layer doesn't have a difference. So there are 15 numbers. And then n plus 1 is actually the same as the number of full layers. So in summary, that's basically what this formula here is. It's the number of layers times the length of the first layer plus the number of incremental differences between layers times that difference between the first layer and the second layer. Um, trust me, it just works. If you work out the length of each individual layer and then sum the total, you get the same as I've put in that formula there. So then the last part, which um, if your reel's a bit sort of jumbled up like that is, I uh, would just kind of ignore it uh, and set that layer width there to um, zero. But if it's kind of neatly and you got you can easily discriminate between full layers and and the last layer, then we can calculate this additional bit here, which is that bit there. And it's basically the diameter of the top layer, which is going to be the diameter calculated from measuring down there, plus the width of the filament, because we've got half of it twice. That gives us the, the circumference of that topmost layer. And then the number of turns will be this width that we did here, the width we said it was 30 mil wide in this case. So if you divide 30 by 1.75, you get 17 turns. And that will be the additional length of that bit there that sits on the top. And so if you then add the two together, you get that. That's that number plus that number divided by 1,000 to get it in metres. So in summary, if you know the dimensions of the reel, then all you've got to do is kind of measure that, stick that number in the spreadsheet, and it'll tell you how much filament's left on the reel.
pretty well. I mean, I haven't, this is in theory, um, I think it works. <laughs> but I haven't tested it, I haven't pulled off 300 meters and measured 300 meters and, um, and then uh, compared it to what I'm showing here. So use the caution, but um, I think it'll be useful. I think, um, yeah, in a nutshell, basically. You know, I haven't got a clue what's on there. Is that is that 150 meters? Is it 250 meters? I really don't know. Um, so doing that and then plugging the number in the spreadsheet is going to get you pretty close. So I hope you find that useful. Um, I'll put a link to it down in the description. You can download it and uh, uh, you know play around with it if you don't like the values that I've used. Um, so the second part was the uh, uh, the duet saga. Yeah, it was in, in desperation really that I um, made that last video because I had problems with the last. I'd, I'd had problems for ever since um, July 2019. But you know, initially it was all very new. Um, but after about a year. Um, was still not being able to do what I want, what I could do before Generation 2 it started getting frustrating and it sort of came to a bit of a head on that last firmware that I update where it left me in a situation where I was getting home and failed messages every time um, I homed it and uh, more often than not extruder was run backwards and I posted those um, problems on the forum um, and after about three four weeks um, nothing had changed so I, I, I was still in the situation where I couldn't use the printer anyway um, yeah doing that video sort of um, focused people's attention shall we say um, and long story short the, the, the matters they did get resolved um, I, I, uh, I updated to another beta firmware and, and it, they, they cured those two problems with the homing and the extruders running backwards but I was getting just bad prints but it was variable from print to print um, I'd get one good one and then I could do it again and it would be rubbish or more often than not the other way around the first one would always be rubbish and the second one and it looked like some kind of extrusion issue um, difficult to kind of say really anyway moved on to a beta firmware and um, and that seemed to improve things but then I had a massive um, crash basically the um, the gantry there was a huge shift in the x-axis of about more than a hundred mil um, but because I've got kind of extruders on one gantry and then the high end underneath on another gantry and there's bogan tubes and wires and stuff in between the two. The x-axis went like that but the y-axis didn't have the same shift so all the wires and the extruders and everything it basically tore the hot end off the gantry um, which then melted the plastic fan plate that I'd got on the bottom and whatever made a mess. So yeah that was um, well, I don't use beta firmware but there you go um, I had to really this is the only way to get this resolved that was probably I think DC said that was probably caused by a very rare uh, race condition uh, which could cause that uh, which is fixed and um, since then I've had no reoccurrences and I've been getting some really good prints out of it so um, yeah I, I, I guess really I can say now that the firmware issues that I've been having for almost two years um, are now all sorted and um, yeah that's the only thing I've got to complain about now is that it took so long to do it but it's it's okay and anybody moving on to Duet 3 now um, should be fine um, having said that I, I mean people do say I've got a really complicated computer uh, printer but I haven't there's a lot of things I haven't got I don't use any form of firmware bed leveling uh, I don't use any flatness compensation I don't use any filament monitors um, there's a lot of stuff that I don't use so um, so although I'm not having any problems with my machine um, 
that doesn't mean that there aren't any issues at all. But having said that, there, there doesn't seem to be anything major on the forums that keeps cro cropping up. So I guess we're all good to go. Um, and uh, I shall need to... Uh, my, 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 so my confidence in the firmware is um, getting better, shall we say. Uh, much better than it was, so um, I have to revisit this mixing hot end um, and see what we can do with that. Anyway, I hope you found the, um, the other bit useful. Um, until next time.